Thanks for tuning in to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us. I was just uh, right below me picking up a corn stalk and I was just going to yank it out of the ground. I figured it's late. This field's long been harvested. And I couldn't even get it out of the ground. The root system was so, good. Good, so good. And I was thinking, wow, must not have had any corn rootworm feeding on this one. And we're going to talk about corn rootworm a little bit. It's a very, very important insect in corn production. And there's getting to be a few more steps you have to take to manage it properly. Well, the other thing, Darren, that could be contributing to that nice root system is the amount of calcium that there is in the soil. Believe it or not, calcium may be the most important thing, the most important nutrient you need on your farm. We're going to talk about it today. Well, one important thing you definitely need is good weed control. We'll show you how to stop this tough weed. But first, here's today's Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to answer a commonly asked question from non-farmers. What's the difference between this 100-day corn versus 80-day corn you guys talk about? Or with soybeans, you'll say a 1.0 maturity versus a 2.0 maturity. What does that mean? Well, farmers are going to spread their risk a little bit on their farm by planting some corn that matures a little faster and some that matures a little later. It's no different than what you might do in your garden. If you're raising sweet corn, for example, you may raise two or three different kinds of sweet corn. So you could start harvesting some early and then some that wouldn't be ready until later to kind of spread your enjoyment out over the season. For farmers, it's about spreading their risk because if we have a year where we get an early frost or if we have a year that's excessively cold throughout the summer or something like that, we don't want to have all full, full season maturity that takes the full growing season before uh, you actually get seed. We want to have some that's a little bit shorter just in case the weather doesn't go our way. Okay, so for corn, it matures differently than some other crops. What corn Corn needs is heat and so we calculate heat units throughout the season and there's a number for what we call growing degree days. The number might be 2,000 or 1,800 or 2,300, whatever it is. So technically that's really what we're shooting for. But in simple terms, back in the old days, we used to talk about it would take X number of days to get the corn mature. That doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be dry yet, but at least it's mature in the fall. And so that's where the 100 days comes in or the 80 days or 120 days, whatever that would happen to be. Well, and this is gonna vary depending on what part of the country you're in too. If you're in North Dakota and way up by the Canadian border, you're probably raising 75 or 80 day corn in a lot of cases. And then if you're way to the southern end of North Dakota, you may be able to raise 90 day corn. And then as you move further south, each state that you move further south, farmers will plant a few days later and a few days later and a few days later. And pretty soon we're talking about- A few days about, longer maturity. Right, and soon we're talking about 120 day maturing corn. Just for fun this year, for our field day and for a demonstration, we planted for one seed company, we planted about every hybrid they had from 77 day maturity to 113 day maturity. And it was really neat watching those plants grow throughout the season. Now, when they first start off, they all emerged from the ground about at the same time. It took about as much heat to get that seed to germinate and emerge from the ground. But once we got a couple of leaves on the corn, it was very evident the shorter maturing corn, so the 70 day, 80 day, 90 day corn, really started growing fast. And what happens with those early maturing hybrids is they just know they don't have much time to grow because typically they're they're grown way to the north where the season is shorter. And so they're in a hurry to try and get the tassel as fast as they can. Where the fuller season corns, they'll grow a little slower. They know they've got lots of time, so they aren't in this huge rush. And what happens for farmers when they have corn that's trying to grow really fast, it's pretty tricky to raise those kind of hybrids because any stress that comes along can really affect them. Where a more full season maturity hybrid can handle stress a lot better because it's not in this huge rush. And basically the difference is not from the time the corn is planted to the time it's small, maybe two, three leaf stage. The difference is not from tassel to maturity. Where the difference comes in is from when the plant is real small up until tasseling time. That's where you see this big difference in how long it takes 
to get to tassel, the short day corns versus the long day corns. And with soybeans, it's a little bit different. Now, Brian said corn matures based on heat that it accumulates. Soybeans look at the day length in our part of the world. Now, there are a couple of different kinds of soybeans. There are soybeans that basically they will do all their vegetative stages first, then they'll start to do the reproductive stages. But in the north where we farm, our season is fairly short. And so the soybeans will actually watch the day length. And as soon as the day length starts to shorten up, then those soybeans start to trigger flowering and the reproductive stages. Even though they may still be very short and have a lot of vegetative growth still to do, they'll start doing those reproductive stages early because you never know when we're gonna get a frost. Well, once again, there is definitely a difference in maturities. And as farmers, we're constantly trying to figure out, well, what's the right maturity? But guess what? Nobody knows what we're gonna have next year for heat or sunlight or rainfall. Nobody knows exactly when we're gonna get the crop planted planted, exactly how long we're going to have to harvest the crop. So we just kind of have to look at history, but it's always a little bit of trial and error. And as farmers, we spread the maturity risk out. So on our farm, we might plant 90 day corn up to 105 day corn. And a lot of farmers will do the same thing. So they've kind of got their bases covered. They're at least not going to lose everything if they happen to have a disaster year. Well, farmers have to spread their risk out and kind of work on what the average is over the years. But one thing they can always count on over the years is there will be weeds to control, weeds like our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? At Titan Machinery and Case IH, we offer better solutions for all your production needs. It's more than our job, it's who we are. We are parts. We are service. We are training. And most importantly, we are here for you. In any season, for every reason, we've got you covered. Case IH and Titan Machinery, better solutions. Looking to maximize yield? Quickroots is a microbial seed inoculant that allows the plant root to explore a greater volume of soil, the key to higher yields. Quickroots continues to generate yield response on corn, soybeans, wheat, and more. Quickroots is applied to the seeds so the live microorganisms go right to work, enhancing seedling vigor, increasing the uptake of certain nutrients, including NPK, and expanding root volume. Maximize yield on your farm this season. Call TJ Technologies or your local dealer and get your Quickroots today. For years, FarmLogic has been the easiest and most convenient way to keep up with your farming operations. Well, it just got better. Introducing FarmPad for your phone. You always have your phone with you, so entering records as they happen is as easy as a touch of a button. Chemical database, GPS, service records, and more. When you do it on the farm, save it on your phone and it's backed up forever. Call or visit farmlogic.com for a free trial and find out why FarmLogic is the best decision tool for the farm. You expect a lot from this seed. And as it grows through each stage of development, Agroculture Liquid Fertilizers is there, feeding your crop exactly what it needs when it needs it. So no matter how you fertilize, no matter when, AgroLiquid efficiently brings all the nutrients your crop needs for a great harvest. From one kernel in the ground to 600 on the ear. For better yields and better quality, Agroculture Liquid Fertilizers. Upgrade your trailer to electric with the Rolltech electric system from AgriCover. Strong, flexible pivot arms and motor mount rotate and telescope, allowing the roll tube to rise and flex over heaped loads. The positive automatic lock is impossible to back off to control the flow of grain. This integrated system uses one wireless remote to operate up to 10 tarps and hoppers, keeping your driver out of the dust, rain, and harm's way. See the Rolltech system in action at an AgriCover dealer near you. When BT rootworm corn came out, a lot of people thought, oh, this is awesome. I don't have to use insecticide again, and I'm going to have no more issues with rootworms. I'm just going to have great yield. I don't know if we were saying that, Brandon. We were very excited, though, when we saw these BT rootworm products on the horizon. We thought, wow. We're gonna have a trait in there. I mean, it's been nice stopping corn yep. borer with BT corn, but imagine stopping rootworm with it. That's going to be fantastic. Yep, but it's just another tool. And the problem with almost any tool on the farm is if you overuse it, pretty soon you're gonna have to replace it. And that's basically what's ended up happening here with some of the single trait BT rootworm events. They're just not controlling the rootworms anymore very well. And 
even if they are controlling the rootworms, if the rootworm pressure is so high, keep in mind that the only way these rootworms will die is if they take one or more bites out of those roots until they get a toxic level of the Bt inside them. Well, if you have lots of rootworms feeding on there, you could have all kinds of root damage and the rootworms would still die. Okay, first of all, you used a word there that may scare non-farmers. And if any non-farmers are watching, they're probably thinking toxic levels of Bt. What we're talking about here is a protein that's easily digestible by humans and animals. It's just not digestible by a certain insect called corn rootworm. Well, think about it this way. Steak could be toxic for you and me too if I ate pounds and pounds and pounds of it. This particular protein is not digestible by these insects. So yeah, it's an awesome deal. And then it does actually, in a lot of cases, lower the need for insecticide. But now that we're having these resistance issues, your best methods of control include planting rootworm BTs that have two different traits. You can use some insecticide on your farm in furrow. You also can use insecticide post-emerge to control the adult corn rootworm beetles. And finally, if you can't solve this problem at all, you can always rotate to a different crop. Well, it's important to understand the life cycle of a corn rootworm if you want to be able to stop it. So corn rootworms, well, they're out there for just a few weeks in late late May, early June, depending on where you're at in the country, maybe they're out there for most of June in your area. Then when they reach the next stage of their life, they'll be adults and they'll actually be beetles and they'll come up out of the ground. And a lot of times now, if you had a corn rootworm issue out in your field, you can see those beetles many times right around the silks. They like to feed on those nice, juicy, tender corn silks. And if they get out there early enough before pollination, they can chew silks off and you may have a kernel that's missing on your ear. Or if you have lots of corn rootworm beetles feeding on those silks, you may have absolutely no kernels that fill out on your ears. Well, in the past, you've probably thought about corn rootworms as just an issue in continuous corn. But there have been two main contributing factors to the reason why most corn farmers in the U.S. now have to fight this particular insect. Number one, there have been a lot more corn acres raised. In our area, for example, there are all these ethanol plants that went up over the last 20 years, so the basis was much better than it used to be, and everybody's talking about, well, I can make a lot more money raising corn, why shouldn't I just raise continuous corn? So when it's 60-70% corn in your area, guess what? You're going to have a lot more rootworm beetles. The other big thing is, as people have reduced the amount of tillage they're doing, there are more rootworms that survive going into next year or possibly even two years down the road. Here's what we're doing on a lot of these acres. If we've got first year corn, so it's on soy bean ground, we may plant a straight Roundup Ready hybrid or a single trait corn rootworm BT hybrid, but in that case, we've got to use a full rate of insecticide. If we're planting a smart stacks type multiple trait hybrid, we may use a reduced rate of insecticide, but if we're in corn on corn, we're going to do the maximum program on corn rootworms that we can. We're going to definitely go with a multiple trait product like a smart stacks, and we're also going to use a full rate of insecticide. Yeah, and some people might say, well, why do I need the smart stacks then? if I'm putting insecticide out. But keep in mind, insecticides on rootworms have always only been 80 to 90% control. So if I can go 80 to 90 there, I can go 80 to 90 on my BT rootworm event. Now I'm gonna have 99.9% .9 control of rootworms and I'm just gonna have a lot less feeding on the roots because I had the insecticide out there. That's a win-win kind of deal. Well, control of corn rootworms is just a little bit complicated. Hopefully controlling our weed will be much simpler for you. Can you identify this week's weed? For years, FarmLogic has been the easiest and most convenient way to keep up with your farming operations. Well, it just got better. Introducing FarmPad for your phone. You always have your phone with you, so entering records as they happen is as easy as a touch of a button. Chemical database, GPS, service records, and more. When you do it on the farm, save it on your phone and it's backed up forever. Call or visit FarmLogic.com for a free trial and find out why FarmLogic is the best decision tool for the farm. Wake up, breakfast is served. Your roots crave pee. Most of your applied pee gets tied up in the soil, a natural phenomenon known as phosphorus fixation. Fix the problem with a veil phosphorus fertilizer enhancer. A veil makes more pee available to your roots. Here, here, and here. Increasing pee availability can lead to increased pee uptake in the plant. That's more pee, more pee, and more pee. More phosphorus for your crop can mean more results in your bin. An average of 9.6 bushels per acre of corn. Breakfast is served. Supercharge your pee with a veil. Capella corn headers are designed for producers who expect more. Expect more grain in your bin. Expect an industry-leading two-year manufacturer's warranty. 
Expect Capella Design chopping and folding options that save you time and money. And whether red, green, or yellow, expect row size options that fit your operation because all producers deserve the best. Expect Capello. It's a head above the rest. For lower cost, higher production, Mandaco Agri leads with versatility unmatched. Twister is the vertical tillage unit for no-till as well as conventional tillage. Twister's ease of maintenance is forgiving in rocks and has contour conformity equaling zero downtime. Our hydraulically adjusted coulter angles make residue management easier, less costly, spring or fall. The Mandaco Twister vertical tillage unit is the new leader. See your Mandaco Agri dealer. Visit northcountrymarketing.biz or call. If you watch Ag PhD TV, you'll love the new Ag PhD radio show each weekday on Rural Radio Sirius XM Channel 80. This is Darren Hefty. On the new Ag PhD radio program, we'll take live callers and provide the agronomic information and brotherly banter you've come to expect from Ag PhD. We'll feature a Back 40 segment where we talk to farmers and agronomists around the country to share what's going on with crop production. And it wouldn't be Ag PhD without addressing a pest of the day. Tune in to the Ag PhD radio show each weekday at 2 p.m. Central on Rural Radio Sirius XM Channel 80. Hopefully you've been doing some soil testing on your farm this fall, and when you're looking at the analysis, if you're looking at parts per million, you may have noticed that the largest number on the whole test was calcium. Think about it this way. It's the number four nutrient, right behind nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. The next one that your crop needs the most pounds of is calcium. And there are a lot of things about calcium that go into its role in the soil profile and in the plant. But just keep in mind, calcium is a very important nutrient. That's why we're talking about it today. Let's start by talking about calcium in the soil. I first want you to think about this. Okay, if I've got calcium and I've got magnesium out there, I want to have a lot more calcium than magnesium. And the main reason why is calcium is a much larger molecule. And so the example I always give is, let's say that I filled an entire room that you're sitting in with basketballs. Would you be able to breathe? Well, of course you would, because there's plenty of pore space, space for air to get through all those basketballs. Well, if I filled that room, that same room, floor to ceiling with sand, would you be able to breathe? No, you wouldn't because the molecule size is so much smaller and the air wouldn't be able to get through that pore space. It's the same kind of thing going on in your soil. The calcium molecule is so much bigger than the magnesium molecule, you want to have a fair amount of calcium in your soil. That's why we always talk about in our base saturation test, you want to see 65 to 80 percent calcium. In other words, you want a lot more calcium than anything else in the base saturation test, especially magnesium. If you have lots of magnesium, for example, lots of that small molecule, that tells us that you probably have a poorly drained tight soil there's just not oxygen getting down through that soil because the molecule size is so small when we're thinking about calcium a lot of times if i bring up calcium talking to a farmer he's like oh are you talking about lime well yes calcium is certainly one of the components of lime when we think about lime it's calcium carbonate and one of the big things that we're doing putting lime out there is getting more free calcium out in our soils now the other way that we think about calcium a lot is in gypsum that's calcium sulfate and Sulfur is certainly another important secondary nutrient. And I know I talk to a lot of farmers all the time that are like, how can I get sulfur out there cheaper and what forms are available? Gypsum is one of those forms that's a pretty good way to get sulfur out there and also build calcium levels in your soil. The important thing is, like Brian was talking about with base saturation, when we are low in calcium, we have to do something about that. It's very important. And if you're just thinking, well, I'll just add more N, P, and K, and I'll work around this pH issue or this low calcium issue, you can't do it that way. You have to get your balance right on calcium. And so when you get a base saturation that's down below 60 or, or even 65, that's when we really need to start focusing on those things like gypsum and lime and adding more calcium into that equation to improve crop production. If you do have a fair amount of calcium in your soil, that's going to mean that you're going to have more oxygen going down in the soil. So theoretically, you should have better root growth, you should have better microbial activity, you should have better availability of many nutrients in the soil. So all these things kind of tie together. And I realize when you look at the soil test, you're maybe just focused on NP and K, but what we're trying to tell you today is take a real hard look at that calcium, especially in the base saturation test. Base saturation just gives you a ratio of calcium to several other nutrients. And again, we want to see that ratio, that 
percentage to be 65 to 80% calcium, those would be pretty good levels if I'm somewhere in that range. Well, those five nutrients are going to add up to 100% in base saturation. So let's just say that you're drastically low in calcium. Let's just say that it's 50% there has to be the other 50% in those other four nutrients. So you could be very high in sodium, you could be very high in magnesium, you just don't or know what it's going to be. hydrogen or potassium. Yeah, it could be hydrogen, for example. And so when you have those others that are high, uh, you say, well, wait a minute now, I'm high in these others, so I've got this problem too. Most of your problem is you're low in calcium. And as you build up more calcium in the soil, you're going to fix some of those other issues. Like hydrogen, for example, is only high because you have an acidic soil. So you have a very low pH soil. And what do you do in that case to fix it? Well, you add lime. You're putting more free calcium out there and you're tying up that hydrogen and all of a sudden your hydrogen percent goes down, your calcium goes up. Brian talked about magnesium being an issue, being such a small molecule. And a lot of times you end up with very tight, poorly drained soils. When we add more calcium to the equation, especially in a combination like calcium sulfate or gypsum. Now we're putting that out in the soil and if you have lots of magnesium, the magnesium has a stronger bond or affinity for that sulfate molecule than what the calcium does. And you end up with the magnesium displacing the calcium and I realize I'm getting into a little bit of chemistry here. But when you have calcium sulfate and you add magnesium to the equation, it all of a sudden becomes magnesium sulfate and you've got free calcium in your soil and magnesium sulfate is Epsom salt that can flush out of the soil. So you can fix things over time. We've got some of the soil that's lower in calcium than we'd like, higher in magnesium that we'd like, and this is exactly what we're doing, trying to flush some of that magnesium out over time and build up more calcium in our soil. Well, calcium is very important in the soil. It's also very important in the plant. There are a number of different things that go on in each and every plant that calcium is absolutely essential for. So make sure you have good levels of calcium in your soil and that those calcium molecules do get into your plant during the season if you want top yield. Well, top yields and healthy plants are very important, especially if you want to control our weed of the week. We'll show you how coming up next. The Weed of the Week is sponsored by the Enlist Weed Control System from Dow AgroSciences, a new herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate. Your farm tells a story, one that continues with the decisions you make. Introducing the Enlist Weed Control System an advanced herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate for exceptional control of tough weeds. The next chapter begins. Our Weed of the Week is purslane. Well, it's one of those weeds that you see all the time. It grows really low to the ground, usually pops up with one main stem and kind of spreads out from there. Now, the downside of purslane that I found out as a kid is we'd go out with a hoe. We'd just take a garden hoe, we'd chop them up because a lot of times you wouldn't find where that main root was. So you chop, 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 and then, oh, okay, you find where the root is and you kind of dig that out. Well, as you chop that up, purslane can actually restart from pieces of stem. Right. So we think we're doing this nice job and we come back two weeks later and it's even worse than the first time we were out there. So you're much better off just pulling the purslane, I think, than chopping it up. Or of course, if you could use a herbicide that would move all through the plant, that would be the ideal option. Yeah, and when we talk about herbicide, when we used to have it around the farmyard, we just used 2,4-D. Well, if you were using a low rate of 2,4-D, it just didn't seem to quite cut it. It would burn it back a little bit. Well, there's and so then many it growing, growing points there. There's so right. many growing points that you need to have a lethal dose to hit every one of those growing points. So it's either a really strong rate of 2,4-D or use a good strong rate of Roundup. That will do a nice job too. And really, you know, when you think about purslane, it isn't much of a problem around places because Roundup has been so good controlling. And because it stays low to the ground, so good crop canopy often wipes it out. But let's talk specifically about control in corn, soybeans, and wheat. Okay, when you think about corn, I really like Status as a burn down product, but Balance Flex does a nice job on purslane as well. Post-emerge, Status is the best option but Hornet does a nice job too. So just if you're going to use Hornet post-emerge, don't use a Sure Start or Triple Flex Down because Hornet is actually in those pre-emerge herbicides. Now in wheat, I really like Wide Match better than Husky and Purslane. Wide Match is really good on kochia and Thistle. Other than that, I like Husky better on most weeds, but Purslane is one of those weeds that Wide Match does a nice job. And sharpen pre-emerge. And adding addition broad spec yep. in or addition tank mix with that Wide Match would do a nice job. All right, soybeans. Post-emerge Bassagran and Synchrony, not real commonly used products. Roundup does a nice job though, throwing Cobra or Flexstar with it is good. And pre-emerge, I like our three pre-strategy brand. I really like Sencor on this particular weed and I also like Fierce. That's it for our Weed of the Week purslane, but stay tuned, Iron Talk is coming up next.
Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. What are farmers doing to feed the planet? They're using Quadtrek technology, soil management, and planting systems from Case IH to foster a better growing environment that maximizes yield potential. Visit CaseIH.com to be ready. If you don't want to miss a beat this planting season, make sure your software is up to date. We'll discuss in today's Iron Talk. It never fails. I'll be working with someone who's trying to plant or trying to spray, and they're having trouble with their computer control system. While it's really no surprise that computers have problems from time to time, many of those problems can be eliminated by keeping your software up to date. At least once per year, most of the computer control systems and other software that you use on the farm will have an update. It's up to you to get this done before you start running into problems and losing valuable time in the field. About half the updates are now available online, so you don't even have to leave your house or office to get them. However, there's still about half of the companies that want you to come to their dealer in order to update the software. Fortunately, almost all of these updates are free. You just have to take the time to do them now so you don't have problems in the field down the road. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now, back to the show. Whether you're feeding cattle, milking cows, or baling hay, the work on your farm is never done, which is why you need equipment that works as hard as you do. Get the efficiency and versatility you need with Case IH. From farm all compact and utility tractors to balers and mowers, all Case IH equipment is designed with one thing in mind, getting the job done. To learn more, visit caseih.com slash livestock. You expect a lot from this seed, and as it grows through each stage of development, Agroculture Liquid Fertilizers is there, feeding your crop exactly what it needs when it needs it. So no matter how you fertilize, no matter when, AgroLiquid efficiently brings all the nutrients your crop needs for a great harvest. From one kernel in the ground to 600 on the ear, for better yields and better quality, Agroculture Liquid Fertilizers. Capello corn headers are designed for producers who expect more. Expect more grain in your bin. Expect an industry-leading two-year manufacturer's warranty. Expect Capello design chopping and folding options that save you time and money. And whether red, green, or yellow, expect row size options that fit your operation because all producers deserve the best. Expect Capello. It's ahead above the rest. For lower cost, higher production, Mandaco Agri leads with versatility unmatched. Twister is the vertical tillage unit for no-till as well as conventional tillage. Twister's ease of maintenance is forgiving in rocks and has contour conformity equaling zero downtime. Our hydraulically adjusted coulter angles make residue management easier, less costly. Spring or fall, the Mandaco Twister vertical tillage unit is the new leader. See your Mandaco Agri dealer. Visit northcountrymarketing.biz or call. If you watch Ag PhD TV, you'll love the new Ag PhD radio show each weekday on Rural Radio Sirius XM Channel 80. This is Darren Hefty. On the new Ag PhD radio program, we'll take live callers and provide the agronomic information and brotherly banter you've come to expect from Ag PhD. We'll feature a Back 40 segment where we talk to farmers and agronomists around the country to share what's going on with crop production. And it wouldn't be Ag PhD without addressing a pest of the day. Tune in to the Ag PhD radio show each weekday at 2 p.m. Central on Rural Radio Sirius XM Channel 80. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. The all-new S-Cube commercial tender is the only tender on the market with poly tanks, giving you the capability to haul seed, fertilizer, water, or liquid fertilizer. Each cube can hold 300 units of seed, 2,000 gallons of liquid, or 300 cubic feet of fertilizer. Options include full-functioning wireless remote, stainless steel conveyors, and self-contained hydraulics. Get yours today at Norwood Sales. That's all the time we have for this week's show, but please tune in again next time for another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. 75 to 95 percent of soil applied phosphorus may be tied up and made unavailable to plants. Farmers use organic proteins and other fertilizer innovations to ensure their crops are fed properly. For more information, visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org.